You are the salt of the earth. My family will uh, attest that I am not a baker. I like to cook, and I usually am the one that makes sure there's hot food on the table day in and day out. And after that, I don't have a lot of leftover energy for the things like homemade cookies that my mother used to make. I have exactly one cake recipe. And so if it is your birthday, you're getting a chocolate cake, and it looks like this. But it's a good chocolate cake. It's my mom's chocolate cake recipe, and it is it's dark, and it's moist, and it's not sickly sweet, but it's just really, really chocolatey. It's beautiful. One time, I lost the recipe, and so I called my mother, because this is, this is the treasured recipe. This is my one thing. i got to have this thing. And I called her, and I said, I've lost the recipe. What a, you know, do, can you re read it for me so that I can write it down? She said, well, do you have the cocoa box? And I said, well, yeah, I have cocoa. She said, turn it over. <laughs> so the, the recipe on the back of the Hershey's box, in case you're wondering, is excellent. <laughs> and I, I, I've never lost it again. But I had a friend uh, a, a number of years ago who is a baker and who, you know, there's a pie for every occasion and, and just really relishes the ability to do that. So I was thrilled when I found out that this is also Ruthie's chocolate cake. Ruthie makes it. Well, then it must be really actually quite good. You know, I was really pleased. And so we, we went to a birthday at their house and there was that cake and it looked just like when I would make it and it was the bright color and it was moist. But there was something not, not quite right. And I'm not usually one to say, well, what I make is better. But this wasn't quite, there was a, something was off. And as we eat and as we eat, eventually she puts down her fork and she says, the salt. I didn't put the salt in this cake. And so we all get a little shaker and we try to sprinkle a little bit on there because it just wasn't quite that wonderful cake that we knew it should be. And I'll tell you, shaking salt on the top of your cake is not the same as when the salt is mixed in <laughs> from the beginning. You know, it may work for fries, but for, salt, for cake, it really he needs to be mixed in. The point of salt is to be mixed in, right? None of us say, boy, I would really like a big pile of salt in front of me. That sounds fabulous. Hmm. But when you mix it in, it makes things taste the way they're supposed to, right? You, you put a little more salt in and you say, oh, this soup is really good. I, yeah, how about that? It just needed a little salt. And now I can taste all the different flavors. This broccoli tastes more like broccoli because it's got a little salt on it. This cake is right because there's a little bit of salt in there. The salt's got to be in the mix. So it's not an accident that Jesus uses this image, is it? And it's not, not uh, an accident, actually, that he picks salt and light as his two things, because salt and light are, are very specifically referring back to the covenant and the Torah and the teachings that God's people have been given. Right? It's not um, whatever we want it to be. Salt and light isn't whatever I think it is. Christians spent hundreds and hundreds of years arguing about how we worship. It turns out that is not salt or light. I love the liturgy. I, you know, great. It's not salt or light. We have spent hundreds of years arguing about all sorts of things that are not salt and light. Jesus says, what is the light? And here it is right there in Isaiah. Is not this the fast that I choose. Not all this worshiping and fasting and praying so enthusiastically. Is not this the fast I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice. To undo the thongs of the yoke. To let the oppressed go free. And just a minute ago he said, you do know you're the one that's oppressing your workers, right? Ooh. And to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide from your own kin? Day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness, God says. When have we as Christians ever had a disagreement about some of these things? No, no, we're all in agreement that this is a little hard to do, right? And we don't need to talk about it too much. Not one little dot, 
Not one dotted I, not one cross T of this is going away, Jesus says. Jesus doesn't want to settle. Over and over again, we hear in the Sermon on the Mount in this season, Jesus will not settle. He knows what the cake is supposed to taste like, right? He knows what God has dreamed for this world that he made in love, and nothing but that dream is going to cut it. No empty forms, no excuses. He says, I want the whole cake for you, right? And so I haven't come to make things easier or to say, hey, don't worry about it. I've come to fulfill the law, to show you what it looks like, right? To show you in flesh and blood what it looks like to live God's law, God's Torah. These, these commands that he has given us because he loves us and he wants us to have the good cake. I had a biology teacher in high school named Mr. Lyons. And I thought of him as I thought about salt that gets mixed in. Um, I grew up in one Lutheran tradition, and he was a member of a church of the other Lutheran tradition, that ELCA. And um, so we we were aware, you know, kind of casually, he mentioned that that faith was a part of his life, not in a a coercive way, not in a, a regular way, but it was something that everyone knew. And Mr. Lyons had this way of touching every single person's life. He taught biology and he had high standards and the grade grubbers, we loved him. And the kids who had to work extraordinarily hard, they loved him too. He coached football and those football players loved him. And he taught a sort of a remedial science class for the kids that just had to get that met but really weren't going to be... able to tackle the the more difficult things, and they loved him. He had this way about him, and it wasn't that he was flashy. Well, he was not cool. He was kind of frumpy. But every person knew how much they mattered to him, and every person, when he talked to them, knew that they had his undivided attention, that he wanted the best for them. If he didn't give you the grade you were hoping for, it was only because he knew you could do better, and he wanted that for you. And so when, when he died uh, a number of years later, the, the sort of hundreds of people that were there to say, wow, who would have thought that that one year in a biology class would have made such an impact on me was amazing. He was mixed in to the life of our high school, mixed into the life of our community in ways that made everyone a little bit more of what they were supposed to be. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. He doesn't say, you know, once you've got it all together, you're going to be the salt of the earth. He doesn't say, once, once you are really successful in life or spiritually, then you will be the salt of the earth. And, you know, spiritual success looks like a cross in God's world anyhow. So, you are, you are. When God says something, things happen, right? Think about that story of creation. Let there be, and there it is. The idea is that God's word is powerful. Jesus' words are powerful. And he says, you are the salt of the earth. Not because you generate or the light of the world, not because you generate such wonderful light all of your own, but because I am going to make it so, right? And so The call is to go and get mixed in. Go and get mixed into this world to give it a taste of the kingdom. Help the people God loves know what the cake is supposed to taste like. So that when people see us, they say, Oh, that's what loving your neighbor is really about. Wow. So that's what it looks like to be so confident in God's goodness that you're not afraid to apologize and to say, that was me, I am really sorry, please help me to do better next time. That's what that looks like. I didn't know what a real apology looked like. Oh, that's what forgiveness looks like. It doesn't say, I forgive you, but, right? I have a a sister-in-law who is a a relatively new Christian. And one of the beautiful things about that is that she takes Jesus rather seriously. 
Some of us have been following Jesus for a long time, and it, it is easier to uh, come up with very carefully crafted excuses about why this or that doesn't apply to me. But my sister-in-law takes Jesus very seriously, and she takes this, this requirement that we treat one another with love very seriously. And so she engages with my one crazy relative on the internet. She willingly goes back and forth with the, you know, this situation that I would just, every time I see it, I say, I am not touching that. I still want to be able to speak to you the next time I see you. I do not think we're going to get out of this without losing respect for one another. I am just going to let that go. But she has this beautiful way, my sister-in-law, of honestly saying, help me understand Tell me what that is about and of explaining her own understanding, which usually comes out of her faith and her desire to love her neighbor in ways that don't assume the other person is malicious, in ways that don't call names, in ways that assume the best of one another and work to find common ground. And I see that and I say, oh, that's what the cake is supposed to taste like. Right? I don't know where God has mixed you up in your life. Some of us drive buses. Some of us are police officers. Some of us are parents. Some of us are all these different things, right? And in one way or another, we are mixed up. God did not say, Jesus rather, did not say, you are the salt of the earth. Come gather in the salt shaker and self, you know, congratulate one another. Go, right? He sprinkled us out into the world so that he can shine this light, so that he can give everyone a taste of what the kingdom means. So wherever it is that you've been sprinkled and stirred in, which can be disorienting from time to time, right? Wherever that is, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Thanks be to God.